Eminem is coming to Shade 45 to close out 2020. What's up, hoes? It's Eminem, and unfortunately, I'm taking you through every fucking trash song on my music to be murdered by Side B Deluxe Trash Edition. They come at me with machine guns, like trying to fight up a net. Let's get into this celebration starting right now. What up, what up, people? It's Gray Rizzy. We out here right now. Shade 45, and we got a special for you right now. Look, we closing out the year real big. And I don't know how I get a bigger guest than this right here. The boss is in the building. Eminem, what's going on, my brother? How are you? I'm good. How are you? I uh, like I'm great. You know, especially that we... You know, like when you do it in the studio and like people are clapping and shit. Like... Hey, there's this claps going on all over the place right now, man. But you know what? I want to clap for you because you were able to give us some more music, man. Music to be murdered by. Side B is here now. The Deluxe. I guess the, the first thing that I would start with is what made you decide to drop a Deluxe on us? You know, being recording music. So, like, the whole the whole quarantine thing and, and all that. Like, like, I write all the time anyways, and I'm a lab rat, so I'm in the studio all the time. But this really, there was really nothing for me to do but right so you know i just started recording songs and i was like i had to i had the idea to do a b-side as i think like the first two three songs that i had recorded kind of started seeming like they were heading towards that way so i just kind of based everything around it again and, and put it together conceptually. I, I need to wrap my head around this because I didn't realize this until I actually read it, that this was like your third surprise release in about two years. You know, like the, obviously the, the music industry is changing, but what made you decide just to drop it on people? The only reason why I even knew uh, maybe a few days ahead was because I started seeing the Alfred Hitchcock pictures all over social. I mean, for, for for me, I feel like you know, I don't I don't know this to be true, but I but I feel like I think I feel like when I talk about an album that's coming out, like if I give people you know notice and they start seeing the track list or they know it's coming, I feel like my best shot at avoiding some of that is to just drop it instead of you know people thinking to themselves like well, you know well if he don't have a song about this that i mean i ain't fucking with it if he's got a song with this person i ain't fucking with it you know what i'm saying like and, and it, and it kind of gives everybody too much time to think about it and their expectations of what they think it should be and i'll never meet that you know what i'm saying so mm -hmm. that's kind of the, the theory that i based it off of ever since um i think revival just put it out there is it was it uh, like i guess the time wise how long did it take to put it together and was it a long process to get to these 16 13 songs and three skits 16 in total it didn't take like a lot of times i think that that when i when when there's space between albums for me it's usually because i'm doing something i might be doing features for this person or that person or working with one of our artists on shady you know what mm -hmm. i'm saying but but these past couple of years, I want to try to give every single thing that I have to this shit. That's been my main focus, I think, since probably since Revival, is to just keep keep cooking. Because a lot of times, some of these songs would have been used for if we had a greatest hits album or something, you know, to put it on or some shit like that. And there's two songs on that. Like we did the Shady 15 thing. I had a couple of songs on that instead of doing side projects like that i kind of just focused on my own solo albums so look we start off the project with black magic with skylar gray obviously you two guys you actually i should say you gentlemen and that gentlewoman over there you guys have worked together over the years and always deliver great projects she she's not a she gentle starts, woman. she's not, she's a, not gentle. a gentleman oh, no. is, is, she, is she not gentle like she's harsh <laughs> yeah she's really fucking mean to me so let me say this and i know i i tell her this all the time but she's like i've, I've had the privilege of working around a lot of fucking town you know it still gets me like it's still crazy to me sometimes when i'm working with dre and i'm looking at dre like you're fucking dr dre the skylar is one of the she's definitely she has to be i don't know how to say this top five of the most talented people i've ever worked with but i've worked with so many talented people but at the rate of speed that she works at a being able to write it and b being able to sing it and to sing it that powerful like she's she's an amazing talent she wears a lot of different hats she's able to approach songs from angles that i didn't see coming and also hit notes that i'm like what the fuck? i didn't expect it to go there and then it's like it was weird to me and then the second time i hear it i love it she's amazing and her talent level is off the charts you but know after 
after hearing you describe it like that, it's no wonder why you went ahead and kicked off the project with Skylar Gray on Black Magic. The explanation is I was trying to give a reason of why you heard the female dying in the beginning of the last record. So it was to tie that in conceptually, but it's it's left to interpretation whether it's an actual female or it's the rhyme and the rhyme is trying to kill me or I'm trying to kill the rhyme. And when I wake up, like it's it's all a dream. So it's the lines are blurred. You know, it's it, it's open to interpretation, but it ties in with the original uh, skit in the beginning of Side A. For right I'm now. glad you did. I'm very glad you did. Shit, it's not just me. It's everybody. It's glad you did. And you know what? This is what I want to do. I want to get to the music right now. We have Black Magic with a collaborator who is family, Skylar Gray. We're going to get into that. We're going to be right back. We got Eminem with us, Shade 45. Hey, Eminem, let me ask you this question when it comes to the title, because you have music to be murdered by you know side b and a lot of times in hip-hop people know that really strong songs on the project are the b-sides man did you intend for that with the title i was just trying to at least match the caliber of the last one so for me it's like once i start once i felt like it started shaping up to be uh what it needed to be at least for me i don't know how everybody else feels about it but like when when it felt like that then it felt like it was time to time to put it out so eminem we got a lot of new talent that's on this right here music to be murdered by side b one of those people are ty dollar sign and i think a lot of fans are excited to see you two come together but my question was like how did you two come together what made you want to work with him well i've been a fan of his for a while now i think like you know he, he pops up on my youtube feed a lot because i'm always looking at what's new what's out and shit like that so a lot of times his videos will pop up and uh the one that really caught my ear that was like sealed it for me was the was the all mine joint that he did with kanye where he's sing, singing the falsetto shit it was so crazy and i was like yo i gotta have a, but i had to have the right song first before i approached him with it yeah man he's nuts his the fucking harmonies he does and shit like it's he's out of his mind well, I'm, I'm glad that you two work together. We're going to get to a song with him in a little bit, but I think uh, I was reading somewhere where the the playful Eminem is back and it's on Alfred's theme. And it's just like this, I don't even know how to put it. Like even when you're rhyming and you stop and you, you know, you're talking and you just kind of wash your hands, the birthday song and all that stuff, very of today, everything that everybody's going through. Shit, I'm taking 30 seconds to wash my hands with the happy birthday song. Yeah. Is it is is this like the I don't want to say your comfort zone, but I think this is the fit. You know, fans love Eminem overall, but this Alpha's theme song is just something about it that makes everybody smile. Well, I want to say this: it was it was Paul's idea to flip that beat. So Paul was like, "Yo, what if you took the Alfred theme and made a beat out of it?" I did, and originally that was actually the first song recorded for the B side. Originally, we had talked about maybe just throwing it out there. Uh, but then once I once I started like getting, you know, honing in on where I wanted to go, the direction and shit, it started just kind of becoming its own album. You know, it also tied in with the first one so well. I'm glad you flipped it. I'm glad you listened to Paul and we're gonna have all the listeners listen right now. It's Alfred's theme. Eminem is in the building. Music to be murdered by Side B. I wanna talk I wanna get into this song, Tone Death, because there's a lot of stuff that's been going on in 2020 and again you you touch on so many points d nice to the rescue you're talking about just cancel culture there's so much that is in this project but when when we're talking about tone deaf let's just talk about d nice for a second you said that you were what you you watch stuff on youtube i know that you tapped in have you been watching what's been going on on instagram and seeing how much he kind of saved the summer yeah man but i i've been a big fan of d nice man i was a fan from uh I was really locked in on his verse from Self Destruction as a kid. And his first two albums, the, the D Nice to the Rescue, that one, the second mm -hmm. album, I know that album by heart, front to back. Like he had the he had the um the crazy Tretch feature on there and shit. Does is he still rapping? Like I don't know if he's still Nah, he, he's totally into DJing now. Like call me That's D Nice, he might play. I, I'm telling you, I, I guarantee you, if he jumped back in it, he could do it, and he could do it really fucking well. Because his one of the best things to me about D Nice was not only his pockets, but his delivery, the way he said the shit. He had one of the, to me, top deliveries of all time. His voice was like one of the things that that got me the first time I heard him. It's like super commanding, like Chuck D or something. You know what I'm saying, like. With uh, with with D Nice switching from that man, let's talk about can cancel culture too. Like 
could you it's, it's a it's a big jump from when you first came into the game to say 2020 right now and it seems like the littlest thing people are right willing to jump out there and cancel you but you cover this in this song what made you put put this in the song i mean why not you know what i'm saying like <laughs> it's with me it's literally like every fucking every other day you know i'm canceled for whatever the fuck it was and then it's like it's funny because i see some of the some of the same people or sites that bitched about things back then that i said and then going back now and saying why can't he be that again what the fuck when 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 i was that you had a problem with that too i understand some of the shit but for the most part like for people who just sit online and they feel like they need to bitch about whatever it is just to feel like they're a part of something or you know what i'm saying like with cancel culture is like no one ever really gets canceled though so what you know what i'm saying like when when people start saying cancel okay well this rapper's still here this rapper's still here or this person in general you know what i'm saying it don't even have to be rap but it's just you know i don't know man i feel like people need to fucking grow a pair yeah, right. I think I like what you said, and I've said it all the time. If you don't like it, don't listen to it. You don't, you don't yeah. gotta, you don't gotta listen. Yeah. But for all the listeners we have out there right now, this is what I have for you, man. Tone Deaf, Eminem, you need to turn this up. Music to be murdered by Side B. Is this the uh, the first time you've ever worked with DJ <clears throat> Premier? Because I, you know, we we got yeah. a song on here where he's doing the cuts, and you said yes. That shit is blowing my mind. You've never had the chance to work with premiere before on a beat and this is just with cuts and stuff how was it for this i'm sure this is like a gift right now oh well i've been i've been wanting to uh to do some shit with premiere and that was one of those those things i just had the idea of what he could scratch and and just having him scratch on the record like that's so dope like he gets a feature credit on there you know what i'm saying because premiere is premiere like a, there's a lot of djs that might not get a featuring credit you got premiere on your shit scratching you're gonna he's gonna get a fucking featuring credit that's like the one of the best parts about it i want to make sure you know who i'm talking about at the end of the song his impact on hip-hop and everything from gangstar to uh you know when, when we do those um a lot of ciphers premiere is usually there providing the beat and i've always been cool with him ever since i met him i've always in the back of my mind like man i wish i had something with to attach because he's you know he's the fucking og man like he's you can't you can't be, get much better than premiere on the cuts and he's a family member you can listen to him right here on shade 45 every tuesday for headquarters radio at 7 p.m east and four pacific what was it uh like when i as soon as i saw the title of the song book of rhymes the first thing that popped in my head was that line from Nas's first album and that's the cut right there was that your idea was it his idea how did just, how did I that happen him, i told him the phrases that i wanted him to scratch and then i just sent him the beat and he just, he did it. Like, I didn't tell him how I wanted to scratch. I just was like, I like these two phrases. You know, if you could cut these up. Man, he did that shit and sent it back like the next day. And I'm so grateful for that. You know, Premier's one of the pioneers of this shit. You know, and 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 to think 30 some years later, like he's still as re relevant as ever. And, and, and the shit he's done with Royce too, you know? The Prime albums, like. It says a lot. The, uh, is this a bucket list for you to be able to work with Premier? It is. It's, yeah, that's, 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 uh, definitely one of them. Well, look, I, I want to go ahead and say having to sit down with you, my brother, is one of my bucket lists. So I thank you for the time. Let's go ahead and get over to this music, man. We got Book of Rhymes featuring DJ Premier. Eminem's in the building. We were talking about Ty Dolla Sign a little bit earlier and the song and you collaborating. The song is called Favorite Bitch and you personify hip hop as a, you know, a young lady. We've seen this before. Shout out to Common, you know, with, um, what's the song that he had? Used to love her. But in, in your, in you putting this together, what made you say I'm gonna name it Favorite Bitch and I'm just gonna lay this out for the people so they understand how I feel about it? Well, actually, um, Sly Piper sent me the track. It had the hook on there with the, with the concept like Favorite Bitch. The way he, that's also him talking in the beginning. That's one of the, like as soon as I heard it, I was like, I knew what direction to go because of what the chorus was saying. You know, and I super could relate to it because it's it's one of them love and hate things, you know? Like my relationship with music is just, sometimes it's fun, sometimes there's parts of it that aren't fun. 
it's it's uh it's like when a chick is leaving you and you refuse to let her go and i know this is going to sound crazy because no man wants to sh share a woman but you know uh, hip-hop is so big now we we have to is that is that tough no nah, it's not tough at all like um like when i said the line you know truthfully it was never really you and me exclu exclusively and there's too many new mcs you can choose between because you know hip hop is forever changing and it's forever revolving or evolving and, and I'm I'm a always push for that next generation to come up and be great which is which is happening so but nah you know hip hop is hip hop was was and is I think I think it's the biggest genre of music now there is absolutely every every era in hip hop to me has had its greats like when you go back with G Rap and Kane and Karis One, there's been Rakim. There's been so many greats in hip hop. The way it's forever evolving is is uh, it's a really cool thing to see. What's well, really cool? Let's go ahead and get to this music because I know people want to they want to hear. How did he describe it? Well, you go to hear it right now. His favorite bitch, Eminem. Music to be murdered by Side B. Deluxe. I want to get over to this song, man, um, Guns Blazing with Dr. Dre. Sly Piper is on here as well. That was actually a record I stole from Dre because he was sending me music and he kept sending me shit. I just kept like, every time he sent me some shit, I'd be like, yo, this one's crazier than the last one. Like, I don't even know what's the, what's the craziest one. And then he sent me that one with the hook and his verse. And I was like, yo, I got to jump on this shit. I was like, yo, Dre, we actually traded a couple of times because mm. I did a couple other songs and shit. And I'm like, yo, you could have the one I just sent you if I could have that one. And we kind of swapped a little bit. That's a, it's a, it's a very, it's very personal. It's a very personal song. Here we go, people. Guns blazing feature Dr. Dre Sly Piper. Now this song right here, there's a lot of questions that I have to this. Um, I'm hearing the new production with DA got, got that dope. Obviously he was on the original, he's on the deluxe as well. But how did you connect with Ooh. Bennett from Lyrical Lemonade? to go ahead and put the video together for Nat. Cole Bennett did uh, the last video we shot, Godzilla. You know, going through, he, like he's done something, man, this kid's 23 years old and he's got so much under his belt already. One of the Juice World videos, like, like you know, he's just the new go-to guy for like, if you want your shit to be crazy. Like the, the craziest part is usually, I have a concept for most of my videos. If we're gonna shoot a video to it, I usually come up with the ideas. I don't think I had, well, I think the only idea I had was to, to bite the head off the bat. Everything else, like he just, you know, he's got a vision, man, that's crazy because I remember shooting it going, ah, I'm not sure if I'm gonna be all in with this one. And then when he sent it back, I was like, oh shit. This is like better than I thought it was gonna be. And how about the production too? Like with, with DA got this dope because you're you're starting to work with new producers, new sounds and stuff. How, is that, is this something that's difficult for you to do? Being that, you know, you might be set in your ways or is this something that's refreshing for you? It's probably refreshing because early on in my career, most of my beats, anything that Dre didn't make, most of the other ones I made. It was just a different process back then. But yeah, that's my 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 theory is that I probably can be the best version of me uh, if I just focus on the lyrics. Copy. This is one of my favorite songs off the project right here. We gonna get into it, man. It's Nat Eminem. Yo, what what motivates you right now, Em? Because you have a song that's called Higher, and at the beginning of Higher, you say been around for a while now, not sure how much I have left to prove and then you pause for a second you say yeah I do so I'm curious what what is motivating you right now because every time you come out it seems like you go higher 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 you say that in the song as far as things like like that motivate myself like it's just the same thing I've always tried to do is like make this one better than the last one you know um, but I draw inspiration from all over the place whether it be from new rappers coming up I'm always checking for the next dude, the next female, whoever, you know what I'm saying? That's, that's, that I feel like is gonna let me hear that and send me back to the lab. And it's like, I don't feel good about myself until I can make something that I think could match the caliber of that, you know? So it's, it's just, I think it's just motivation w within myself. But aside from that, like, you know, I'm always checking for Cole's new shit, Kendrick, 
you know, Joyner. I know I've said that a lot. Young and May. I mean, and, 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 and all of them have been actually around for a little while now, but uh, like YBN Corday. Music to be murdered by people. Side B, the deluxe edition. Yo, M, this is this is crazy. Let me tell you something. I know people give you your flowers all the time. I mean, shit, I'm on your channel right now. It's Shade 45, but this is really dope to sit down and talk to you about a deluxe version of a song that you put out. I mean, an album that you put out basically in the same year. Have you ever done that before? Have you put out two albums at the same time? I don't think so. I mean, back in the day, it was like, you know, when 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 I first got on from the Slim Shady LP to the Marshall Mathers, the Eminem show, one of the reasons, like, I didn't have a lot of side projects going on right there, aside from some of the D12 shit, but, but that was the, you know, that was the grind. It was like, I, I make this album, now I gotta go out and tour to promote it. I'm on tour for six to eight months, and I can't even get in the studio. Talking about like, you know, going back a little bit, you got the song These Demons and you kind of you started off with I want the new but the old shady. Is it is your process different? Like, you know, in, in writing this song right here for these demons, was there, you know, do you see is there a correlation between the two? You're the you're, you're one person, you feel what I'm saying? But is, do you approach it differently? You just said back in the day, like you really didn't write on the road because it shit was hard. Well, a lot of times too on the road, like I didn't even have beats. Like I was making most of my own beats. So unless Dre sent me something, I didn't really have any beats. So that was one of the one of the issues then too. But like I think some of the things that that I'm addressing on this album, you know, you mentioned like me having fun, sounding like I'm having fun with the Alfred's theme and tone deaf and shit like that. And I actually am because honestly, that's the kind of shit that I would much rather do have to talk, be so serious all the time and talk about, you know, I wish there's issues in our country that I wish weren't happening. You know what I'm saying? So so I could be more playful and shit all the time. But like, you know, on on, on that song in particular, you know, I'm, I, you know, the first verse is talking about just, I think what the average listener would expects from me and then right. juxtapose to the others, like, like no matter which way I go, this person over here is going to be not happy because because I'm trying to please this person, you know, so on and so forth. So it's it's kind of like that. For me, it's like I've been around for a long time. So it's like, you know, oh, he's already talked about this. He's already talked about that. OK, well, name any artist in the world, rap or anything that fucking has been around for a long time and has talked about something before. You know, there's only so many subjects you can actually even fucking talk about. But for, for me, like on this record, I feel like I wanted to address some of the police brutality shit, you know? And, you know, I'm gonna always let you know where I stand with that. It's it's great for me when I can have fun with shit. But like I said, sometimes you I gotta get serious and, and, and fucking talk about things that bother me, you know, whether in, and even if people do, oh, well, he's, you know, he's better when he's funny, he's better when he's playful, he's better when he's this, he's better when he's that, you know, okay, but I need to talk about this shit. I, I, I got this, this song right here, These Demons, featuring Maj. Now, how did how did you two connect for this song? Because Maj is fairly new, right? Well, I found out about Maj through, through Paul. Kind of started going down the wormhole and checking this shit out, like, earlier this year. Always liked what he did, you know what I'm saying? Like, so when the when the subject came up of this hook, like, I, I, re I told Paul, I was like, yo, what about Maj? And he was like, we could we could get him probably, you know, we, we have to call him or whatever. And I know that he signed the Def Jam. That's how I found out about it. He was signed the Def Jam and Paul put me up on it. Called him, asked him to do it. He did, he turned it around. Like, I feel like, I, I think that, uh, I think he's definitely about to pop though, because, and that's one of the things I told him on the phone, because like, if you look at his videos now, he probably, probably got, from the last time I saw, 200 some thousand, you know what I'm saying? So he's, he's bubbling right now. And I think that he's, he's definitely gonna pop. He's too good not to. So I was one of the first ones that was up on it. I know I wasn't literally one of the first ones, but I'm saying like, you know, there's something that's dope about that to me. So that when I see them blow up, I get satisfaction knowing that, you know, I was on it early and I told you, yeah, man. Dope. Smart move, Maj. Smart move. Music to be murdered by people. Side B, the deluxe edition. I, I want, I'm not gonna call this halftime. I just wanna know how you're gonna deal with this, man, because you have two brothers, Royce the Five Nine and Alchemist. They've been nominated for a Grammy. This is like seeing two of your brothers go for the championship. Yeah. What's, what's a what's the feeling like and b i'm not I, i'm not gonna ask you who you're rooting for because i know you want both of them to win but 
what's the first thing you're going to say to the winner? Give me it. <laughs> Give me your Grammy. <laughs> nah, um, I don't know, man. I'm happy that they're both like, like this is this. It's 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 great for me to be able to to sit back and watch that because both those guys are so fucking talented. And it's like, you know, I've been saying that that I wish that they would get more shine. And I think that this is definitely from for from my point of view a step in the right direction as far as, you know, with the Grammys, it seems like they're at least trying to get it right. I'm happy for both of them. And regardless of either one of them, if they win, they're still Grammy nominated. You have this song, She Loves Me. Now that we know that you love your brothers and, you know, best of luck to both Voice of Five Nine and Alchemist on their projects and for that best rap album category. But you got She Loves Me. This is another relationship kind of kind of song and you know what throughout throughout your career throughout your music and all your albums it always seems to be relationship stuff that's in there man she loved me but really she loves my, my not you know the money that's there you're not stupid about the whole situation why did you put something like this on the project oh i don't know i just that that was a, a song that uh dre gave me the beat to and it just one of those that that hook i think popped in my mind first and you know she's talking about a typical like meeting a chick backstage and, and them saying like you know it's not it's you that i really care about or you know what i'm saying it's like nah <laughs> but uh yeah that's one of them playful one of those playful kind of relationships i mean at least i didn't kill her in the end she didn't Man, get murdered this, so this is true this is true i feel like this is a good chance for for cats that just have no idea what the hell is going on this is an educational moment this is a teacher moment for them yeah right let's get to it man it's eminem where she loves me off music to be murdered by side b the deluxe is out there right now go get that you have uh another song another song that's produced by da got that dope which is killer we mentioned him a little bit earlier and he was on the original version of music to be murdered by what is it like i, I think people take this as an honor when they have the chance to work with you multiple times but then able being able to work with you on multiple projects that are you know so close together what did he do like what was the thing where you say you know what i, I want to bring him back to work on this part right here this oh deluxe. he's always sending me beats he's always sending me beats and and it's it's like he just you know i i don't i don't know how much better he could possibly get because it but but it's like he just keeps getting better you know he's at the top of my list as far as producers right now like absolutely at the top of my list so yeah he's always sending me shit a lot of times it'll be like like if i'm listening to a beat and i can't sometimes I, it takes me a second to figure out which one i like the best to lock in on so sometimes i'll write a verse to to one and then write a verse to another beat and then start putting them together knowing that i'm gonna do that from the beginning like I think these three beats would sound crazy. For Nat, that's one of the reasons that the beats keep it switching switches up. up. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's because uh, I couldn't really figure out which one to lock into, so I locked into all three and then just put them together. But yeah, man, he's 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 crazy, man. He's at the top of his game right now. Maybe it's that Midwest connection, Detroit, Chicago. You know, like it just y'all connecting the dots over there. Possibly. <laughs> Possibly. Look, we got Eminem. We're going to get to this song right here. Killer's music to be murdered by a side beat, a deluxe edition. Eminem's in the building. Keep it locked. This song that you have is uh, creating a lot of talking. Zeus. The first part uh, with you apologizing to Rihanna um, for a, a, a leaked verse that got out. You know, I thought it, it said a lot about you as a man. And you've been you've been on the record about the friendship that you have with Rihanna. But this made it onto the project. Uh, why the apology now? Well, it was pretty recently that, that that verse had leaked. And honest to God, I told Paulus when it first when it first happened, I was like, first I didn't know how how somebody got it. Second of all, I, I have no zero recollection of even remembering doing that that verse. Like the the rhyme schemes didn't even sound like familiar to me. So I was caught off guard too. I was like, what the fuck? I said that, and that was you know that was during early like stages of uh the relapse record that i was working on so you know it's 10 plus years old but i'm not making excuses for it I, I i said it and i was wrong for saying that it was fucking stupid you know a lot of times especially with with the relapse record when i first started learning how to rap again because of the drug situation that i went through and having to relearn a lot of things that was one of those things that it was like well if it rhymes say it i think that being able to look back i mean that's not even an, an excuse but i'm just saying like that was 
there was a phase I was going through with that relapse record. I don't know. It's one of those things I think I just said it because it rhymed. And I think I'm sure looking back now, I, I, I should have thought better of it. You know, it was one of those things that, like I said, I don't even remember recording, but record a lot of songs. So it was like, it's it's tough sometimes to even you'd be like, oh shit, I remember that. You know, I, but, I know a lot of people are very, they're very happy and proud that they they got to hear that part from you you know that that apology on, on zeus there's also a uh, a reference where not even a reference where you know you, you're, you're talking about or speaking to snoop in the sense of you know he he you don't need to be dogged by him and i, I didn't know exactly when or where what did snoop do that made you put this line in this song well a couple of months ago you know he was doing an interview with the breakfast club somehow my name got brought up and he was saying things about, you know, I'm not in his top 10. And everything he said, by the way, was fine, like up to a point. You know, when he like, like, hey, I've never said like him saying that that he, I'm not in his top 10 because there's some rappers from the 90s that I can't fuck with. I, you know, a, a him saying Dre made the best version of me. Absolutely. Like, why would I have a problem with that? Like, if it, would I be here without Dre? Fuck no. I wouldn't. The rappers he mentioned from the 90s, KRS One, Bigetti Kane, G Rap, like I've never said I could fuck with them. I never said that. You know what I'm saying? So it's all like everything was good until like, you know, it was more like, I think it was more about the tone he was using that caught me off guard. Cause I'm like, yo, where is this coming from? I just saw you like, what the fuck? You know what I'm saying? Like it just, it threw me for a loop again. I probably could have got past the whole tone and everything, but it was the last statement when he said, as far as music I can live without, I can live without that shit. Now you're just, now you're being disrespectful for, like it just caught me off guard. I wasn't ready for that. And people started hitting me up about it. Like, oh, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? And, and I didn't know what to do about it at first. Cause I just, it, 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 it confused me because I'm like, yo, bro, same team. We're on the same team. Like what the fuck? And I have never in my career, my entire career ever said a disrespectful word about Snoop Dogg. I mean, what the fuck? Like his impact on hip hop, like I can't, I can't front on that. But it's like, at what point does it start becoming like, okay, now you're, you know, everyone's entitled to their opinion. My top 10, top five ain't gonna be the same as his, but everyone's entitled to their opinion. So how could I be mad at that? I wasn't mad about the opinion. It was after that, it was, the, you know, that the very last statement was like, oh, what the fuck? Mm -hmm. Like, damn dog, like really? But you know, I said what I said, I addressed it. I felt like what, what I said what I needed to say. And I'm not saying the true size, but it definitely is, uh... It's a song that's going to be talked about for a minute, man. This is Zeus, music to be murdered by Side B, the deluxe edition. Eminem's with us. Shape 45. You know, you mentioned a lot of different things in the project, man. St. Andrew's Hall, The Shelter. Do you miss being able to spar in those intimate kind of settings and those stages? Um, I do. I do. It's kind of like an old life that I wish, you know, I could live, relive parts of. But that was definitely like, you know, there's something special about that time period to me of just being on the grind and in the hopes of being discovered one day and you know the grind that was the battle rap scene and, and at St. Andrews Hall, the hip hop shop, Ebony Showcase, uh, C Note, there were so many places that that I miss going to. A lot of times like I think about like you know you get sentimental with shit. You start getting like nostalgic when you think of things like that. And going back to St. Andrews Hall I don't know, it was probably like five or six years ago, just made me miss it that much even more because it was such a landmark for me and Detroit hip hop. Dilla, everybody, anybody who was anybody in Detroit was at, at the shelter. So like, but yeah, I do, there's there's definitely parts of it I miss. It, 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 was, it was one of those things, it was like wondering if it could happen and how exciting it was to think of it being able to happen, you know? Cause we had a whole crew of like, D12, like everybody, like we all had those kind of dreams and it was all always like one of us gets on, like, okay, there's six of us in the group. So if one of us gets on that, we have six times more chance <laughs> you know what I'm saying? to get a record deal. And back somebody's then, gonna kick in the door. Yeah, and back then it wasn't like it is now where it's like, you know, you could fucking just record on your computer and send the, send the shit out to the world. We had to get a fucking record deal. We didn't get a record deal, that was it. We were fucked. Yeah, man, but it was just a different different time, an exciting time in my life. Uh, 
on, on this song discombobulated man you have production mm. by dr dre was this uh you know was was this intended to be the the last song on the project nah it wasn't it wasn't when i recorded it so i was like there was there's a couple ones that i was going through and i was like yo I, i'm gonna let me sit with that one for a minute and mm -hmm. if i can keep the hook but just write different thoughts to it so that's kind of how that came about was just writing new verses and just keeping that hook. This is this is going to be super random, man. But you know, uh, did you really have a pool in, in junior high? I, I'm gonna tell you something. That's the meanest <laughs> dog I've ever. It, it, oh, and in and, and one time I was looking at him in the face, like like just uh, talking to him, and he fucking bit my nose. Oh my god! Lunged at me and bit my nose. Pookie, that little fucking dog, man. I, I wanted to ask because I'm like, yo, he seems like a, a Rottweiler type of guy. You know what I'm saying? Me, I grew up in the South Bronx. I'm more of a pit bull type of guy. That's what I have right now. But when I heard the poodle, I was like, wow, this this is definitely discombobulated. I'm going to tell you some funny shit because that that is one of the, the reasons I wrote that line. That, that's one of the things that inspired me to write that line. Like we had a, when we lived on Dresden, we had somebody stick a dead kitten's, uh, cut a kitten's head off and stuck it in our mailbox. So... Nice. Hence was the line when I said on I'm back on the Mathers LP. I used to get punk and bullied on my block till I cut a kitten's head off and stuck it in his fucking mailbox or so, whatever, it said something like that. And that was one of the things that inspired that thought it was like a lot of that shit is like true shit and I just flip it, you know what I'm saying? But well, hopefully somebody will go ahead and stick music to be murdered by side B and you know, you go mailbox. ahead and got it as a gift. And then <laughs> in their mailbox, go get it. Put the music to be murdered by in your mailbox. Right now. You know what I mean by mailbox. <laughs> if you don't right know now. what I mean by mailbox, you probably should you probably well, should turn this interview off. Well, I'm I'm gonna let them go ahead and go enjoy the music and also say happy new year to them and happy new year to you, Eminem. I appreciate the time and you coming Absolutely. up here to be with us on Shade 45, brother. Thank you, man. Happy New Year.